Hi everyone. My name is Jesus Rodriguez. This is an special interview with Adil Kane uh, from International Magazine. And uh, and uh, I want to, uh, before you know, jumping into the questions, I want to introduce her. She is the executive editor of the International Magazine, an independent news outlet based in India, right, Adil? And, and she's also a Sweden-based researcher and anti-imperialist activist that previously uh, wrote for uh, about resource sovereignty and the rise of the pink tide. So welcome Adele uh, to our interview. And I wanna jump, I, I'm going to jump right now to the, to the first questions, which is uh, about uh, how um, you describe the international magazine in your own words, and you know, beyond what you can read in the About Us information in your website. Hi, um, yeah, so the magazine was created to provide an exclusively Marxist Leninist digital media publication that would have global coverage and representation um, that is English language, but not monopolized by Western imperialist discourse. Uh, the editorial board is largely made up of Marxist commentators and members of communist parties operating within a number of different regions. I would describe it as a timely project that seeks to address the crisis in leftist publishing. Uh, it is necessary to develop publishing solutions that are sustainable, uh, that are not beholden to liberal editorial stances, um, and where we are not continually sharing alternative media platforms with the political right. Uh, so this is what the international magazine seeks to address. That's fine, that's fine. And it, it is very important to have alternatives like yours or like Orinoco Tribune and many other, you know, in the PD, I mean, independent projects around there uh, uh, that, I mean, because we try to present an alternative option of, you know, media, information uh, about what happened in the world different from what mainstream media uh, provides. So I, I, I respect the work that you are doing. Uh, and, and we actually have been republishing several of the works that you have done. Uh, but uh, 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 we, 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 we sometimes uh, struggle, uh, especially when we read things written by people from the Communist Party of Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> that lately has been has been has been taking positions that in my humble opinion are moving away from the chavista project and getting closer and closer to the right wingers in venezuela the squalidos as we call them so that takes me to the to the to the to the second question which is is your stand on venezuela driven only by the communist party of venezuela because I know that you have an editor from the Communist Party of Venezuela, and, and maybe that also have an influence on your writing. Um, yeah, so the stance of the magazine on Venezuela is not driven by the Communist Party of Venezuela. Uh, they have in the past contributed an article to the magazine. Um, and of course, we have an editor, a regional editor from the party. Um, it's it, it's it's not a position that I would approve myself. Um, I think I speak for the majority of Marxist Leninists globally and those involved with the magazine when I say that the party that rightfully represents the Venezuelan struggle and lays claim to the extraordinary achievements of Venezuela in combating US imperialism, in building and supporting mass movements, in developing world leading social policy, national and resource sovereignty, and infrastructural development is of course the PSUV. And under the leadership of Nicolas Maduro, absolutely honors the incredible legacy that Hugo Chavez left behind. Um, within the context of such a successful national struggle, a communist party driven into opposition by their own dogmatism could be understood as saboteurs, um, playing into the hands of imperialist interests, which is exactly the role played by the PCB uh, in Brazil, in opposing Dilma Rousseff, mm. and Ecuador by PCMLE, in opposing Rafael Correa. The Communist Party of Venezuela have no doubt taken a much more balanced 
position historically, and I hope that they do so again, Me rather too. than following a similar trajectory. Me too. In the interim, I can only reiterate that the Workers' Party of Venezuela is the PSUV, and I would like to see that reflected in the international magazine, and I strongly encourage PSUV supporters and representatives to contribute and play an editorial role in the magazine in the future. That's nice. That's nice. And 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 the PSUV is neither perfect. I mean, I mean, no, I mean, there's nothing perfect in this world. So 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 we all know that that, that the, uh, we are surrounded by imperfections. We are humans. And I, as you say, uh, the same way as you, I expect that that the compass from the the PCB, the Communist Party of Venezuela, uh, reevaluate their you know, recent approach towards Chavismo and and rejoin the process because I believe that uh, disregarding the mistakes that Maduro might have commit uh, as a human being or the PSUV can, you know, have committed, uh, uh, disregarding uh, those things, uh, Chavismo is very alive and is interconnected mainly with the PSUV. Uh, and not with the PCB, sadly, sadly, because I mean, I, 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 I would have loved that the PCB would have like the, the deep uh, uh, rooting that the PSUB built during Chavez time and now during Maduro's time. So anyway, I, I, I just believe that there, I hope that they should reevaluate, uh, you know, their approach and 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 if they do that we will be you know moving together in to the right direction with their criticism because they always has been critics even during i'm talking about the guys from the pcb do even during chavez time they were critic when they saw something that they dislike or anything so i believe that the critic approach the constructive criticism approach is very important everywhere so 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 let's see what happened but it, it, it is nice uh, anyway uh, the work that you do and and of course presenting the perspective of the pcb of venezuela is something that i believe that can be done but also uh, as you say inviting people from the chavista movement from the psuv to 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 contribute and to present and other per perspectives about, about the Chavista process, the Bolivarian Revolution, uh, is also very important in my, you know, in my humble opinion. Uh, so let's jump to the next questions. That is, uh, what is your the international magazine positions on the inter-imperialist struggle? I'm just talking about, you know, those compass out there, especially in the North. Uh, uh, that says left, they call themselves leftists, but they call uh, Russia and China imperialist powers. And in doing that, they leave us, mainly us in the in this global south, not knowing exactly uh, what we are if we call ourselves anti-imperialists. So, you know, uh, when, whenever that happened, you start thinking, okay, I'm anti-imperialist, so I'm, I should go against the US and Europe, which are the, you know, the imperial powers of all times, or I should go against China and Russia, which I'm not saying that, you know, they have perfect economic models or anything like that, but, but I don't want to put them in the same place like the US and Europe, I don't know what you say about what you think about that. Uh, well, yes, exactly. Um, so China, um, the, the theory of imperialism, of course, itself relates to the capitalist state and wouldn't at all be useful in any critique of a socialist country. Um, and the stance of the international is that China is indeed a socialist state. Um, Russia, on the other hand, is um, capitalist, but the notion um, uh, of Russia being an inter-imperialist rival to the US is unrealistic. Um, while the capitalist state is expected to have imperialist aspirations, 
In reality, these opportunities are rare and therefore less likely to be explored as a possibility by smaller economies. Russia is in no position to rival US imperialism and it knows it. So I don't think that's a particularly useful tool in analyzing Russian foreign policy. The stance of the international, if it has taken one, would probably be better described as understanding Russian foreign policy in the context of confrontation with Western imperialism. Um, and that the claims of uh, inter-imperialism confuse the global south is of no surprise to me. Uh, the global south is largely made up of small, technically capitalist countries. And if they were accused of inter-imperialist conflict every time they were nationally or regionally confronted with Western imperialism, this would, of course, reveal itself as absurd. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. Uh, anyway, I believe that is a complex issue that uh, at least we in Orinoco Tribune, we try to 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 present it in the way in the best way we can whenever we had a chance to you know to have someone writing about uh, what Lenin meant when he talked about imperialism and what other analysts that are there so-called leftists uh, think of when they talk about inter-imperialism and the struggle between according to their you know uh, theory between the US, China, and Russia, uh, taking mostly geostrategic analysis and mixing it with Marxism, uh, I believe that it doesn't work. I mean, you can do an, uh, you can, you can do a, a, you know, strategic, geostrategic analysis, uh, and you will find some, you know, imperial characteristics uh, in, in, in China or in, in Russia or in many other countries, but, but say connecting that with Marxism, Leninism, that's where, you know, we, see the problem i myself see the problem so so it, it's nice that you are telling me uh and, and and i've seen in your website that you have that position of you know support of of uh, russia in this particular conjuncture with in the ukrainian conflict and also the all this you know new cold war uh, strategy from europe and 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 the us against china so 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 I believe that's that's what should be done, and we, that most people that what most people should do in you know in this particular area, especially among leftists. You know, um, now I will jump to the next questions, which is uh, how do you survive financially? And I'm asking, and I'm asking you that because we know the Noco Tribune, we are always struggling. Uh, you know. Uh, without resources. I mean, we have uh, good friends that support us, but it's not enough for having a paid staff or something like that, that I dream of, but that we cannot have right now because, because uh, uh, the amount of, you know, donations and support is not enough to, to do that. So I just wanted also to see how do you deal with that? Uh, that it's not a small issue. Um, it, yes, obviously the, the magazine's quite new. Um, uh, it's about a year old. Um, and in the initial stages, a small number of activists uh, um, personally provided startup funding for the magazine. Um, uh, as of recently, the running costs of the magazine are now covered by subscriptions alone. And the magazine enjoys a high number of voluntary contributions and editors um, with few paid staff. Um, uh, and there are, there are no external funding sources, either through corporate or political party funding, um, but it is exclusively subscription based. So anyone who does support our um, uh, project should subscribe to the magazine. That's fine. Um, yeah, and uh, and of course um, the the model here is is slightly different um, because the um, because 
the magazine is run from India and it is produced in India and is it and is um, um, and has a readership in the West. So this this model kind of um, uh, changes the usual uh, funding stress. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. That's true. And what are your projects? I know that that the I mean, what are what are your big projects coming ahead? I mean, do you have some programs, podcasts, or something that you are planning to do soon, or something like that? Oh, I don't know. That would be uh, um, <laughs> yeah. I, well, I don't know what the others have got. <laughs> I've got lined up, um, uh, but uh, some people have been suggesting that um, that uh, you know an important part of of um, of magazines in the old days used to be uh, the arts and sports and so forth, and and so some people have been pressing to have more of a focus on bringing the arts back into leftism. That's one suggestion I've, I've heard, um, but I don't know um, what will become of that. Um, uh, the, uh, of course, as, an, as a digital magazine, there's this opportunity to branch into um, more video production and so forth. Um, so, um, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I think right now we've been working more in co collaboration with Redfish, um, you know, for. That's fine. Um, That's fine. They journalism. are great. They are great. Yeah. They are great. Well, Adele, uh, uh, I thank you for your time and uh, I wish you the best in the, in, in the, in this second year that you are already running on. And please count with Orinoco Tribune uh, uh, in whatever we can be of help in order to, to reach the, the common goals that we have, which I believe are like, you know, showing the cracks in the imperialist uh, system, in the capitalist society as a whole. I believe that that's one of the most important things that we should do. Uh, and also at the same time analyzing the, the current geopolitical events and you know and trying to give it some uh, Marxist Leninist socialist man they minded and anti-imperialist uh, um, perspective to help people understand better the reality because uh, I believe that currently there's a lot of people lost uh, into concepts into uh, in, in, into the misunderstanding of concepts and, and you find a lot of people outside the leftist movement and even outside the liberal or 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 the or the left or uh, I mean right wing movement that are mostly lost mixing fascism with communism and mixing uh, 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 this guy from the open society saying that uh, that he's a socialist and, and the reality, George Soros I'm talking about, and the reality is that the guy is a right winger, you know, promoting, mm -hmm. you know, uh, color revolutions everywhere. So I believe that our work is extremely necessary and I congratulate you for the work that you are doing. I don't know if you want to add something just to finish the interview. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I would just reiterate that um, uh, that I do strongly recommend that um, uh, that the PSUV um, uh, approach us for a role in the editorial board um, to ensure that um, uh, that uh, articles about Venezuela are accurate. So um, yeah, so I would just like to uh, extend that invitation. <laughs> it's the main thing and um, thank you for having me. We will try to be of help, of course, Adele. And thank you for your work. Un abrazo from Caracas. <laughs>